6th century BC of the Classical Era was a time of chaos and turmoil. The Assyrian Empire had just fallen, and empires started to wage war against each other for domination of the Middle East. The Median and Neo-Babylonian Empire were the major power holders, with emperors ruling over their conquered people with a tight iron fist. Conquered people during this time endured not only numerous accounts of rapes and beatings, but also a loss of their previous cultural identity. In the midst of this chaos rose Cyrus the Great, a young ruler who would change this treatment towards people and leave a lasting mark on history for millennia. Over the course of Cyrus's 71 years as the king of Persia, he showed excellent leadership by gaining the undivided support of his people and left a lasting legacy not only in Persia, but also on a worldwide scale. Cyrus the Great's story begins with the Persian Revolt of 552 BC. This revolt was a shift of power from the Median Empire to one of its tributary states, the Persian Kingdom. After inheriting the Persian throne from his father, Cyrus was unpleased with the way his grandfather ruled the Median throne. His mistreatment of Cyrus's people led Cyrus to initiate a coup d'etat. There are all sorts of different stories, uh, and they basically revolve around Cyrus being able to uh, take the place of the king, first because the king is unjust, uh, and doesn't have enough support. Uh, second, because Cyrus is a great military leader, he's good at leading troops. Uh, and third, because I think maybe most importantly, because Cyrus knows how uh, to make friends. With an admiring speech to win over his people's loyalty and passion, Cyrus commanded his army to march for Media. Although the Medes initially seemed to win the war, they were quickly overwhelmed by Cyrus the Great's army. The Median Empire's fall in 549 BC established the Achaemenid dynasty of the Persian Empire, and Cyrus's effective leadership was proven at a young age. Cyrus's great leadership was further exemplified by his rapid conquest of nearby countries. In a matter of decades, Cyrus expanded his empire to reach from southwest all the way to Central Asia. During his military campaigns, Cyrus not only displayed great leadership and courage, but also utilized great military tactics to ensure his victory. The most notable of his battles was his conquest of Lydia. A closer look at the Battle of Thimbra, where Cyrus fought the Lydian Emperor Croesus, clearly depicts Cyrus's brilliance and leadership on the battlefield. The following is a brilliant tactic Cyrus used to take advantage of the Lydian troops. What turned the tide for the Persians was the fact that they had camels and that the camels frightened the Lydian horses. Victories in battle alone, however, were not enough to name Cyrus the father of the Iranians. What truly engraved Cyrus as one of the greatest rulers in the history of Persia was his pioneering of a religiously and ethically tolerant way of ruling. At the time of Cyrus 2500 years ago, views on human rights and cultural diversity were very different from those of modern society. Conquerors killed or enslaved people on the lands they conquered, persecuted religions that were not their own, and even destructed the people's cultural heritage. A primary example is the Assyrians. Assyrian kings, their ideology, their imperial ethos, if you would, was based on terror. And in the monumental inscriptions and art, they would often broadcast their ability to do harm to their enemies. Cyrus, on the other hand, tried to uh, emphasize his own humanitarian nature. He shied away from broadcasting his ability to do harm to his enemies. Instead, he portrayed himself as a merciful and clement conqueror. Cyrus the Great showed his exceptional leadership by going against this accustomed way of ruling. When conquering, he did not kill innocent people, nor did he enslave them. Cyrus practiced religious and cultural tolerance. Though Cyrus himself was Zoroastrian, he not only tolerated but showed respect for other religions as well. Considering that it was commonplace for conquerors to deface idols and temples of those they conquered, Cyrus's religious tolerance was unprecedented at that time. This gracious way of ruling gained Cyrus the full support of not only his people, but also the respect and praise of his enemy's people as well. This shows that even in the eyes of non-Persians, Cyrus was never an alien king. In most historical texts, Cyrus the Great is mostly known as the triumphant conqueror, a superb warrior, and the founder of the greatest empire of the classical era. However, Cyrus the Cylinder, the Bible, and extensive writing by ancient historians Xenophon highlight another aspect of Cyrus, his legacy as a liberator. 
From the start of his reign, Cyrus liberated his people from tyranny and brought them under the prosperous Persian regime. Thus, Cyrus's major legacies as a liberator can be divided into three categories. His emancipation of Jews from the Babylonian captivity, his first declaration of human rights, and his effective governance of the massive Persian Empire. In the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament, Cyrus is mentioned more than 30 times, all of which praise him unconditionally. For instance, the book of Isaiah calls Cyrus the Shepherd of God, the Anointed One, and the Messiah. Cyrus was able to gain such titles because he was honored among the Jews even today for liberating them from the Babylonian captivity. We know that the Jews whom Cyrus liberated from Babylonian captivity looked upon Cyrus with very high regard. In fact, they hailed them as their Messiah or the Lord's anointed. In 1878, Cyrus Cylinder, a baked clay cylinder with 44 lines of cuneiform inscriptions of Cyrus the Great, was discovered through the excavation of Babylon. The Cyrus Cylinder is an excellent example of modern imperial propaganda and legitimization by the rule of religious tradition. The cylinder helps corroborate the Jewish story, of course, found in Ezra, in which Cyrus is the anointed savior who returns to the lands and returns the temple of the Jews from the Babylonian captivity. These cuneiform inscriptions provide evidence of Cyrus's equal treatment of his nations and his appreciation of human rights. Although the very idea of human rights was frowned upon in the ancient world, Cyrus, surprisingly, adhered to humanitarian values by creating the Cyrus Cylinder. The Declaration of Human Rights written by Cyrus has been hailed as the first charter of human rights dating back to 2,500 years ago and predating the Magna Carta by nearly two millennia. As a result of such significance, the original Cyrus Cylinder is now kept in the British Museum. October 29th, the day Cyrus entered Babylon, is celebrated worldwide as the Cyrus Human Rights Day. Additionally, the Persian Empire that Cyrus built left great legacies involving a federal government. After coming into power, Cyrus divided his empire into smaller provinces and appointed governors, or satraps, to rule them. In detail, Cyrus gave autonomy to all the states and ensured their sovereignty. This system of governance was the first of its kind and inspired the later Macedonian and Roman Empire to rule in a similar fashion. Now, beneath him, you had uh, the division of the empire into uh, satrapies. These were basically provinces, each of which was under the governance of an imperial satrap. The basic hallmark of it was that the people, the native traditions, remained intact. This was a very efficient way of governing an empire, and it was something that was adopted by the Hellenistic kings, beginning with Alexander. And then it was adapted later on when the Roman Empire expanded. Even Cyrus himself probably did not imagine the far-reaching consequences he would have for millennia after his death. His brilliant mind that transcended this era attempted to solve the very issues of human rights and cultural acceptance our society is combating today. Unfortunately, Cyrus' legacy is eclipsed by the familiar achievements of other leaders. Today, we know more of rulers like Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, and Julius Caesar, but we fail to recognize the grand leadership of Cyrus. Our society knows more about the Declaration of Independence, the Magna Carta, and the U.S. Constitution, but we know little about the Cyrus Cylinder. While we enjoy our civil rights and sovereignty today, we must ask ourselves, without the legacy of Cyrus, would any of this have been possible? He was perhaps the most influential figure in a very formative period in human history.